Hi, I'm Dr. Jane, and today I'll be sharing with you some information about how you can help your puppy stay healthy and happy. I'll be concentrating on the common intestinal parasites of puppies and some of the effects on the pup's well-being. You've just picked up your new puppy and are thrilled to introduce him to your family. But don't get too eager to bring him home at once. As cuddly as a new dog may be, he may carry something much less appealing, a parasite. Parasites are more than just a minor annoyance. Parasites live in your puppy and get their food from your puppy. Parasites in puppies can lead to illness or death and may even affect human members of your family. Today, I will introduce you to some of the worms that can take hold of your puppy's digestive system. The most common types of gastrointestinal parasites that we see are roundworms, hookworms, and tapeworms. And at Animal Medical Center, we recommend deworming your puppy at two weeks, four weeks, and six weeks of age, and monthly thereafter. Without proper deworming, puppies may require hospitalization. Some symptoms of intestinal worms in puppies include loose stools or diarrhea, inappetence, vomiting, pale gums, swollen belly, dry coat. Severe parasite infestations can be fatal. So this is something that you really need to get a handle on as early as possible. Now I will tell you a little bit more of some of the common parasites. Wrongworms, a very common parasite for which puppies are more at risk, can pass from mother to puppy even before the pups are born and continue to reach the puppy through the mother's milk during the time of lactation. On the screen, you can see uh, wrongworm eggs that are seen through the microscope and the adult wrongworms that puppies pass um, after they have been dewormed or sometimes even without being dewormed. These um, parasites resemble spaghetti. Most people look at them and it, and it recalls spaghetti. And they would pass them in a bundle and these can cause um, blockage in the intestine. So you would need to deworm your puppies as early as possible. Here we can see a mother um, nursing her pups. And these puppies are getting very important nutrition from their mother. But unless this mother dog is regularly dewormed, they will be getting parasites as well from her and not only nutrition. Another dangerous parasite that we see in puppies rather frequently are hookworms. These are usually contracted from, by puppies from their mothers when nursing or by swallowing a hookworm egg. Puppies usually come in um, with bloody stool or traces of blood in the stool. They don't want to eat. Um, they're vomiting and they're general malaise. On the screen, you can see a hookworm egg as seen under the microscope. And those um, beside it are the hookworms themselves. These are usually, um, they're small, um, not so easily seen by the naked eye, but when you have a large quantity of them, they can be seen. And a lot of time we tend to see them um, post-mortem when we do um, a necropsy, it's in the intestine. Typically, we will see the stool, as you can see demonstrated there with a um, pup, puppy that have hookworms. It can also happen um, with wrongworms as well. You get this very dark, tarry stool um, with a very unpleasant odor. Another of the parasites that we see as well is whipworm. This lives in your dog's or puppy's large intestine. These can be contracted by licking or sniffing contaminated grounds, and they can be difficult to treat um, sometimes. 
Explaining a bit more on whipworms, unlike rungworms, hookworms, and tapeworms, which live in a dog's small intestine, whipworms inhabit the large intestine, in particular, the cecum, which is where the small intestine and large intestine meet. Dogs can get infected with whipworms if they consume food and or water contaminated with the eggs of whipworms. Once the eggs are ingested into the dog's body, they migrate into the gut and hatch. In about three months, the larvae grow and mature to adult stage in the cecum and large intestine. They adhere themselves to the intestinal wall by their mouths and feed on the dog's blood. Unlike hookworms and rungworms, whipworms larvae do not migrate to other body tissues as Whipworms can wreak havoc to a dog's health, causing such problems as chronic colitis, anemia. It is important to eradicate these worms without delay. Very important. Another of the major parasites ingested by your dogs are tapeworms. These come by the way of a host that is housing a tapeworm egg like an adult flea. If your puppy has fleas, it is advised to deworm with a medication that kills tapeworms. These worms can grow up to several feet in the intestine of the puppy and can also cause blockage, um, blockages in the intestines as well. On the screen, you can see the tapeworm egg as seen under the microscope. And adult tapeworms look like string of small rice grain which can seen in segments or, or connected into one long strand. Um, sometimes when owners notice their pup stool outside, they can see the actual tapeworm segments walking or moving on the stool. And most times that's when we would see an animal or an owner would come in because they're seeing the tapeworms on the, um, on the stool from the, from the puppy. Protozoan parasites are not worms, but cause similar symptoms in puppies. It is important to raise puppies in clean environment to prevent protozoan parasites. These single cell parasites may always be present in the digestive tract, but stay quiet due to your dog's immune system. If a pup gets sick or very stressed, however, these parasites may start to manifest in an unwelcome way. Symptoms include repeated diarrhea, watery and smelly with possible mucus and or streaks of blood, vomiting, weakness or lethargy, weight loss, and fever. Giardia, the parasites inhibit your dog's ability to properly absorb nutrients, water, and electrolytes, which leads to diarrhea and weight loss. The diarrhea can be intermittent or continual, especially in puppies and failure to diagnose and treat the disease can lead to severe weight loss and even death in extreme cases. The disease is particularly dangerous for puppies, senior dogs, and dogs with compromised immune system. Coccidia or coccidiosis is one of the most common type of single cell parasite. It is extremely contagious and often cause severe illness. A fecal smear can help with the diagnosis. If it proves positive, a sulfur-based antibiotic is prescribed to stop the reproduction of the parasite, eventually removing these organisms over time. On the screen, you can see a slide of Giardia and the Coccidia um, parasite. Over. And as it said on the slide, don't forget kittens need to be dewormed too. All this information applies to kittens as well as puppets, so, so don't forget Bring your kittens in to be dewormed as well. Here at Animal Medical Center, we value your pet's overall health and well-being. We aim to work with you to ensure the best possible care for your furry family members at home and at the clinic. If you have any questions or concerns, we welcome your calls, but you can also submit any queries on deworming to me through email, Facebook, or Instagram, and your questions will be aired. And I hope to provide answers to your questions next week at the same time. Thank you for listening and thank you for being with us today.
Thank you again. Dr. Philip will present on the topic of vaccinations in two weeks time on the 27th of October. We hope to find you back here with us again.